Hi, I'm Jess Gartner, the CEO and founder of Alloview. I'm one of the facilitators for the Baltimore City School Spending Equity and Transparency Panels. Starting on Wednesday, October 3rd, these panelists will meet bi-weekly in a public forum to break down the $1.3 billion district budget into school-level spending. These panelists represent a variety of stakeholder groups, including board members, principals, charter school operators, district staff, parents, and community members. Alloview, a Baltimore-based education finance company, will be leading the analysis and meeting facilitation. Alloview's mission is to empower districts to strategically and equitably allocate resources to support the needs of students. Jason, Corey, and I will be working together on this project in collaboration with the panelists. We each bring unique perspectives and experience to this project from our work in education finance across the country. Over the past five years, Alloview has analyzed nearly $50 billion in education spending and supports many of the country's largest urban districts in budgeting and managing their resources. Before you join us next week, I want to take some time to explain the goals of this project. Some of you may recognize this graph from the recent Fair Student Funding work by Education Resource Strategies. While the funding formula brought transparency to how dollars are allocated to school budgets, there are still outstanding questions about the equity of spending in other categories of the budget, such as grants and other centrally provided services to schools. In these panels, we will classify all district spending for all schools and central administration. In cases where these dollars are recorded centrally, We'll talk about how those dollars impact resources at every school in the district. At the end of this analysis, we'll share this information in a series of easily understandable data visualizations on the web. In the final visualizations, you'll be able to compare spending in different categories from one school to another across the district. In the context of enrollment and demographic data, this information will help our city have critical conversations about resource equity for all Baltimore City students. In the notes attached on this page, you'll find a series of key vocabulary words and definitions. You'll get the most out of observing the panels if you familiarize yourself with these definitions in advance, as many of them sound similar but have very particular meanings in the context of education finance. There are a couple of concepts I'll review here. When we talk about funding allocations, that happens in different stages. First, there's the allocation of state, federal, and local dollars to districts. If you've been following the Kerwin Commission, you may know that Maryland is currently revisiting their state funding formula, which determines how they allocate education funds to districts like Baltimore City. Once districts have their total allocations, they create their own allocation methods to determine how to allocate resources to individual schools. These methods vary from one district to another. Some use staffing ratios, while others, like Baltimore City, use a student-based allocation model. There is no one right way to allocate dollars to schools, but it's critical to be transparent about how these allocation methods impact resource equity. And that's the purpose of our work in these meetings. We'll be discussing how the $1.3 billion Baltimore City Schools budget is allocated to schools and what that means for resource equity. This might sound like a simple task, but there are so many different factors to consider when we talk about how dollars flow through schools. In these panels, we'll be talking a lot about metrics of attribution. This is a fancy way to say, how do we make decisions about where dollars go? For example, some expenses are related to the school building itself. This might be things like utilities or grounds maintenance. Other expenses might be related to staff, things like health benefits for teachers and administrators. Some expenses are related to the number of students in the building, and it can get even more complex 
because not all dollars are directed to students equally. For example, special education funds are allocated based on the number of special education students. This is a good thing because it means the district is being very thoughtful about ensuring that students with exceptional needs are getting the resources they need. However, all of this complexity about resource decisions can make it very difficult to answer what seems like a simple question. How much money does each school receive? So far, we've broken the budget down into six categories that we'll be exploring each time we meet. On October 3rd, we'll be discussing federal grants dollars. In future weeks, we will discuss special education, centrally managed services to schools, central administration, and other indirect costs like debt service and retiree health. If you don't know what those mean yet, don't worry. We'll learn together in each session. Direct school costs make up about 40% of the district budget with about $535 million that are already recorded at the school level. These costs include things like teacher and principal salaries and benefits, as well as discretionary spending at the school level. These are some of the easiest dollars to track at an individual school level because they are physically and uniquely present in each building. As you can see here, school-based staff salaries and benefits make up about 85% of the budget for this category of spending. Now, these are totals for the whole district. If we break these dollars down on a per student or per pupil basis, we start to get an idea of how these costs can be attributed to individual schools. In the notes, you can see details for how these per pupil costs compare between charter and traditional public schools. I want to draw your attention to the non-position expenses line at the bottom, where charters are receiving about $3,000 more per pupil. The reason why there's such a big difference here is because traditional public schools receive many centrally administered services that charters are responsible for providing on their own. Instead of receiving the services, they receive these dollars directly. As we go through other budget categories, we'll talk about how these services are allocated to individual schools to get a better picture of resource equity across the whole budget. This brings me to an important point about resource equity. We can't have a productive conversation about equity until we have all the information. Right now, we have an incomplete picture of spending. On any given week, please remember that you are only seeing one slice of data at a time. But together, we'll bring the whole picture of district spending into focus. Each meeting will follow a similar structure. First, we'll review school level data based on the attribution rules that the panel discussed and agreed upon the previous week. Next, we'll present baseline data and context for the week's current topics. The majority of the time will be spent discussing how these dollars flow to schools and what rules guide those decisions. We hope you'll be able to join us for all of the sessions. But if you miss one or need to take a closer look, we'll be posting notes and presentations from each week on the BCPS website. Lastly, in order for these sessions to be productive and efficient, the designated panelists are the only people permitted to engage in the discussion. Everyone else is welcome to observe, and if you have any follow-up questions or comments, please feel free to email us.